thanks for the introduction, thanks for the opportunity, and thanks everybody for waiting. I'm going to share my screen. If I could have some feedback, is that all visible? Yep, that's looking good. Very good. So um, I have been asked to give an update on the underground asset register. Um, I will do so with a set of slides. I then would like to invite um, some questions. Um, we have a couple of members of the project team on the list as well. Um, so you either type things into the chat or um, do them live after. And then we will um, stop the recording and I'm going to attempt to give you a quick live um, demonstration of the current prototype so you've got a bit more of an idea um, what we're doing. So um, this is an update and uh, we're in April 2020. We've now um, completed our pilots and we're now um, in what we call the preparation phase um, to head towards the National Underground Asset Register. We're working in partnership with the Greater London Authority and the Ordnance Survey to deliver the pilot phase. A quick couple of slides on the Geospatial Commission. We have been established inside the Cabinet Office um, in order to help the UK's, um, the UK unlock value from geospatial data or map location data. And we will be soon um, publishing the UK's first geospatial strategy. We are um, on Twitter and we have a LinkedIn presence and we also are um, is findable under uh, with our own .gov.uk website where we do have an increasing amount of information on what we're doing. We're now two years old um, and we have for example a very high profile announcement um, a few weeks ago that we are we are um, making the Ordnance survey data available um, as part of the public sector mapping agreement or geospatial agreement. Um, on the left there we have our annual plan which is soon to be superseded by the uh, publication of our strategy. And in the centre there, um, a year ago, um, almost to the day, um, we had the then Minister for Implementation, Oliver Dowden, announce the un underground asset register pilots, pilots up in Northumbria, uh, up, in, um, up in Sunderland. Um, and since then, we have been proceeding with with the with the pilot program. Um, one quick word about the Geospatial um, Commission is that we have a six partner bodies that I just briefly wanted to mention. So we have about forty people in the commission uh, in we're working out of uh, Westminster, which is a, a series of um, a mixture of people from um, administration, finance, policy. Um, GIS, some GIS people, some um, economists, um, but we also draw on um, our partner bodies that you can see on this slide. And I myself, I'm seconded from the British Geological Survey and in the Geospatial Commission, I'm responsible for stakeholder management and engagement. Um, by tradition, I'm a geographer and then um, geologist and have worked for the BGS for 20 years before joining the commission in 2018. So a few slides now. Um, so apologies for some of you on, on the call. Um, some of you have actually been part of our advisory group. Some of the people have probably seen me present before, so there'll be a little bit of repetition, but I'll, I promise when we get to the live demonstration, there'll be some new bits, people towards the end. Um, everybody knows what the situation is like under the roads, um, the hidden um, and buried assets that are um, mapped in their own way and this is the sort of information you receive either on physical or digital paper if you carry out a search either by yourself or one of the search providers. Um, different scales, different annotations, different orientations even and it is just basically a very inefficient um, and unsatisfying um, uh, situation to get an overview of all buried assets in any one location. More interestingly, um, even more um, um, problematic is that once we've found the assets and recorded them, we tend to not feed that information back into the appropriate databases. So there's spray paint everywhere and surveys everywhere, and we are not really 
Pause Was that a vacuum? vacuum? Click the Add to Chrome button to continue. We what? are not really, as a, as a whole, upkeeping and maintaining and improving the quality of our underground assets data. And in case anybody ever asks why we're doing all this, I mean, we have obviously got common interest, all of us, um, in making it uh, making it safer. And um, so we have obviously had drills hitting the underground, and this is a picture I've got um, permission from the photographer. This is just before Christmas, um, a rotary drill pulling out um, telecoms and data cables over an area of hundreds and hundreds of meters disconnecting thousands of people from the internet. We have um, not been working in isolation, we've been working, first of all, um, in, in the research phase we've contacted existing um, uh, underground asset Click registers. The download. I think someone just needs to find the mute button if possible. Um, so we've looked at Scotland, um, Belgium and the Netherlands, we've drawn a lot of experience from um, what they've um, created over the last few years and have also been working closely with those with representatives from the Scottish Roadworks Commissioner and Transport Scotland in particular as part of our advisory group. So the next slide is, this slide is very important to um, yeah, so we've invested the, 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 into the pilots in the, in the London and Northeast. But very important here is to, to make the point that the initial focus of the underground asset register is to unlock value in, in particular in, <clears throat> in three sources of value, which is the, to avoid utility strikes and the, um, and the surrounding project in terms of planning on the desk and in the, in the field, um, planning efficient efficiencies and the data exchange inefficiencies. So we are not dealing with a whole series of other use cases related to digitizing underground assets. We're also not dealing with very deep um, buried assets such as tunnels and deep wells and boreholes and piles and all sorts of other things. And we are now um, in the preparation phase, which is that the main objective of it is to get towards a um, releasing invitation to tender for the regional build and the national rollout, which will include over the coming months um, an asset owner consultation UK-wide um, and also in autumn the request for information where we go and talk to the market as a whole. So just a couple of slides uh, on the current pilot areas which we are in London um, going to, we're going to maintain throughout the preparation phase engagement with, the, with, with both areas and their stakeholders and we're slightly widening the participation in particular in, in terms of local authorities <coughs> and smaller independent um, providers such as district heating networks and um, smaller um, independent um, electricity providers. But the two areas that you see here are basically where the pilot has been active and we're maintaining momentum for the time being for a little bit more testing and learning. The big success um, of the last past years that through voluntarily, um, so we have no um, means of obviously mandating participation. This has all been done achieved through building a strong network of um, participants and collaborators, both in the Northeast and in London, and we've had all these infrastructure and asset owners um, participating in the pilots. Here's the list, same list for the Northeast. So we have uh, two very different geographical areas. We have obviously dense inner city um, situation here, also with some uh, information not yet um, vectorized. So we were playing with um, use of raster data as well, and with obviously very sensitive assets um, in the city of London. Um, and then we have uh, in the Northeast, obviously a much larger area and also a much more rural city and rural, rural area. Both pilots, important to say, both areas go back on um, you know, our building and we have effectively adopted and built on existing initiatives in, the, in, in London. And this was to do with the previous project called Hades which was um, a Transport for London initiative and supported by Thames Water and the GLA and in the Northeast Northern Survey, Northumbria Water Group, Northern Power Grid Gas Network, et cetera, initiative building on um, Innovation Festival 2018. 
So very strong grassroots um, networks that we were able to, to draw on and build upon. We are um, obviously at the moment um, busy with other priorities in government and across the country, um, but we're hoping um, that the project, as it supports a whole number of um, non-COVID priorities, um, such as fiber, 5G, charging stations, planning infrastructure, and so on and so forth. We're hoping we will keep the momentum through the current crisis and we'll be able to convince Treasury to continue investment. Um, so a lot of other initiatives and, um, and um, use cases exist surrounding the, the um, digitization of, of, of underground assets. This is the team. There's a small blog um, introducing who we all are. So you can see there we have a mixture of um, GLA. Um, this is in the basement at 100 Parliament Street. We'll still be able to travel to London. Um, an ordnance survey and um, four members of the Geospatial Commission. There's a little block there introducing who we all are. And we've been supported um, academically and technically throughout the last year um, by our advisory group, which we've pulled from a, a range of um, professional bodies um, and learned societies and academia. Um, so we have, for example, here Kat Crane from Transport Scotland. We have um, Helen from the Health and Safety Executive. We have representatives from Belgium, Netherlands, and on the screen there on the right, um, Jeff Seiss, who's a, a um, one of the evangelists in the underground asset space and a regular blogger. So we have convened um, four meeting, uh, three meetings. The last one was just postponed and will conclude end of May. This is an important slide to make sure that you know that we do not ignore the other use cases that exist. Um, and they fall into three sort of broad categories of, of planning, resilience, um, and uh, underground space and, and, and development of, of cities and the project iceberg and there is a link here as this um, slide deck will be shared um, <clears throat> is a link here to an organ survey space where organ survey and the British Geological Survey are keeping an, an, an active and engaged stakeholder community looking at the continuous prioritization and evaluation of other use cases beyond the current strike avoidance uh, use case so, for example, coordination of street works um, is and, and planning um, of networks and planning of, 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 of towns and cities and, and, and um, of flood risk planning are obviously very, very prominent use cases. So we're not dealing with them per se, but we have effectively here a, a think tank um, that keeps us uh, informed of those should we be able to widen the um, use case in the, for, in, in, in the future. So there's a call here for people to get involved. This is just it's simply a mailing list with occasional um, in activities and occasional face-to-face um, -face meetings when, when they will be able to happen again. So what has been achieved? Um, one thing that was um, achieved quite early on with help from the OGC, the Open Geospatial Consortium, is an emerging common data model between all asset owners through many, many um, one to um, um, use and workshops with the, indiv with the individual asset owners. And we have, the, we have adopted um, a model by the OGC called Muddy, which is still very much under, um, under development in the coming, in the coming months. Um, and we are hoping by the end of this year will be finalized and then we'll be part of the ITT. There's also been um, achievements being made uh, in, the, in the use of a, a common color scheme. All these findings are written up in uh, technical reports by delivery partners, and we are beginning to share with selected um, all to share some of those findings now. Some of them will be shared, as I said, as part of the request for information and information and the invitation to turn out later in the year. The Systems architecture in some certain in a high level diagram here <clears throat> is that we are clear it's clear that the uh, information the data needs to reside at um, at the data providers so we're we're experimenting with a, a hybrid hub here where we have um, 
uploads, regular uploads of data in, in the common data, in the data degree data model, or, and this is very much part of the preparation phase, uh, we are still expecting a couple of um, consulting members to serve up APIs. They are being centrally managed. We have a whole bunch of security layers, um, authentication and audit and tracking, and then we provide a, um, an outbound API for, um, for the consumer to, to connect to and to test. Very important, I should probably say, um, repeat here at this point, that everything we've done so far is a prototype platform, so that I'll be showing live in a moment. Is not the finished article. We did not procure uh, at this stage the actual IT solution. We just procured um, from our delivery partners the, the stakeholder engagement, the reports and learnings about um, security, the data model, and the, um, the learnings, which were all good to uh, mentioned as part of the request for information and invitation to tender. This is a bit more detail about the systems architecture and you can just about make out there are three types of user. There is an admin user, there is a map user and there is a field, an office user and a field user all with uh, varying parts of access to the platform depending very much on role-based um, access and all the various security clearances. We've overcome a whole bunch of challenges. Um, we are working very, very closely with the Center for Protection National Infrastructure, National Cyber Security Center. Um, we're also working closely with the Energy Data Task Force and the Center for Digital Build Britain. These are all initiatives and government agencies who are trying to encourage sharing, but encourage secure and safe. Sharing. So we have had to overcome a whole bunch of challenges, um, in, even for the prototype in terms of security, legal and commercial sensitivity. And we did this in both communications very much with the, obviously the publisher, the asset owners, and their own security and commercial teams, but also with advisors such as CPNI, and of course the end users, and really working out what is it that the end user actually needs, who needs access and why, and not making access wider than it needs to be, but wide enough and detailed enough so it fulfills the use case of, of strike avoidance. Um, and we've ended up with, um, just a, as, a, as a hint to the, the, to the ODI, the Open Data Institute, obviously advocating um, as open access as possible, so we have landed effectively on this data spectrum in a, in a group-based access scenario. So every asset owner who has shared, has signed up to a common data sharing and end user, data sharing agreement and end user license, and is making available the data for the pilots, for the testing to all other asset owners, and importantly, with permission of the um, admin administrator, um, the supply chain so it can go as far as um, anybody decides um, it can be given to all con consultants and contractors for the purpose of testing the um, prototype and this is yeah and just to repeat we have admin map and utility users and importantly the the amount of the access, the, the, the area of access is limited, for example, as a map user for, for 10 to 10,000 square meters. And I will show that live just after the Q&A. So just for the finish, to finish off the, the, um, the recorded part of this, of this um, webinar, there's a couple of screenshots here. Again, reminder, again, this is just the prototype. This is not the National Underground Asset Register. This will be effectively thrown away um, at the end of the at the end of the pilots, so you can see your your web based view here as a, a circle has been opened up, and you see the attributes you get and um, assets displayed in the map window. Um, here a slightly more um, busy street, and the next slide um, shows also how we've handled um, raster backdrops. In this case, from UK Power Networks in, in London. So, quite a bit of a challenge to sort of constrain the view to the, to the rasters and also various issues with too many overlays at the edges. And so, quite an interesting challenge that was 
um, overcome here. And I will show live, but here's just a still. Um, we are experimenting, as I said earlier, we would like to in eventually the entire geospatial commission is, is about making access, uh, get, getting better access to, to um, location data, fair principles, finding it into operability access and, and usability, but also we're very much in, interested in, in improving data quality. So we're experimenting with something that is, is being asked for by everyone, um, which is to provide feedback um, on, on, the, on what you might have found or not found in, in an excavation. So you can place a little pin and um, attach a photo and an observation. And we, it's very much an interesting journey now to see, and especially comparing this to internationally, how other countries have coped with this. What do asset owners do with this information? What about liabilities? How do you integrate this into your baseline data set? And will this actually culturally and uh, in terms of workflows, will this actually work? So that's the um, outlook into the future where we'd like to be going eventually, making the data not just making the process safer and, and easier to dig up uh, our roads, um, but also provide information about data quality back. So that's the end of the slide deck, um, and the, the future is looking bright and colorful, as you can see here, once the information is obviously digital, and we potentially have depth information at some point, there's all sorts of um, interesting uh, ways of looking at the data to come for future. So feedback now, questions now, or uh, you can always email in or find me on one of the social media platforms. So now I'm just gonna, See if any notes have appeared in the chat. So, there's a comment about historic. Can everybody still hear me? I've got no feedback from anyone over there. I'm still. Yeah, we can I'm hear assuming, you. Oh, thank you, Clive. I'm assuming you can. Thank you. So uh, sometimes you just wonder whether your network has gone down and you're just talking to yourself. Um, a lot of historic asset data is very poor. Yes, absolutely. So it is proposed that um, data owners share their data as is, as, as poor or good as it is in the current process, and that um, we have obviously appropriate um, disclaimers in place, and that data will improve over time. That is an, up to the individual asset owners to decide how to improve their data. It is at the moment just replacing the as is process with a, a more digital process. Yes, okay. So, this is very interesting, Luke's question about the API. So, we have a, the outbound API is, is, um, is still and very much under, under discussion. We've had some trials with it, but there are um, concerns about the um, security parts to this. So we have to very care, be very careful here with particular with asset owners who have commercially and security sensitive assets, how we can control the outbound API. We have tested in principle, so we've used um, QGIS um, as, as, the, as the client and we have um, used the, the data in, 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 in that way, but it is not decided how we we're going to proceed with that. When do you see, uh, fantastic, okay, um, what works up? Okay. the accuracy of us, I've sort of answered that we are not making the data more accurate than it is, than it is on, on the digital paper. Um, we have a quality um, field and if asset owners have indication on, uh, on PAS type uh, data confidence and quality, then that can be attributed to the asset. There is a bit of research going on, particularly in the academic sector, um, how we might one day um, have confidence buffers or shadings, or maybe even um, um, a three-dimensional view of the buried assets. So that's very much um, in, in R&D. We are, uh, when do you see regional national rollout? Um, we are going to, it says one, three, or five. I'm going to go for five. In, uh, first of all, for three, in three years, I would like to see a regional rollout. Um, so we're going to hoping to go to procurement um, at the end of this year and have a supplier in place in April um, in, in, in 
this time next year. Um, I will be completely honest here and upfront. We, we have not decided um, what constitutes a national rollout. We, of course, we have a United Kingdom of, of very different uh, regional and local and devolved authorities and governments. Um, so it could be a phased approach where we go for some regions. Um, we obviously, we're very mindful that um, Scotland already has a, a system for, uh, for, for the roads. Scottish Roadworks Commissioner, so we're not obviously going to steamroll in and propose some sort of national system that supersedes that. So, but within three years, we are hopeful, very hopeful, that we have some regional operational business as usual system. Yeah, so accuracy is on everybody's mind. We're hoping that we are raising the bar in terms of digitalization and access and sharing, and then that by by that by by um, by itself the the, the culture of, of work change and we will all be hoping we'll all be seeing an, in, an increase in accuracy and, and, and feedback of better information and maybe a, a partially resurveying um, of information um, in time we're not stipulating from a central government point of view any sort of you must increase your accuracy or anything we're just sharing as is Color blindness, very interesting. That's really interesting. I have a question about the colors you have chosen, and they have in fact been created by the Ordnance Survey, um, being mindful of um, of, of um, color blindness. So I um, I would be interested in um, in in a, in a bit of extra feedback on that if you find that difficult to to see. Record keeping up to date is all the responsibility of the asset owners. Absolutely, yes. So this will be a federated system. <clears throat> the financing of the full underground asset register is definitely, that's, thanks for this um, direct question. Um, no decisions have been made. So we have on the slides that you can um, look at later, where there are models in, uh, by the Scottish Roadworks Commission and by the Belgians and Netherlands to either recover cost of point of use or recover costs of asset owners, or the, the um, central or local authorities say this is partly a role for, for the government to take. No decisions have been taken. So this will be part of the, definitely of the request for information and the consultation. The appetite has been huge. Um, asset owners are very hungry. Um, <laughs> um, the input, the feedback has been absolutely superb throughout, and we, has, we are really pleased and grateful for a lot of the voluntary, uh, a lot of the extra effort that all these organizations and their GIS and utility departments have to have made to share. Um, standard object libraries. This is not my forte. There's, um, we have uh, our, um, our uh, product owner, Neil Brammel. Um, we have Hugh Phillips in the Commission on the Ordnance Survey and the GLA team are currently working on the data model, so I cannot answer the to the BIM level three. We are talking to the Centre of Digital Build Britain, so I need to take that question away. Cool. Um, is there any way um, to the to Catherine or someone to capture these take these questions out of here and maybe um, maybe um, capture those? And yes, they do, um, when, you, when we stop the recording, it does convert them into a text file. So um, that would be great. I should be able that would be to great. Um, another thing, I know you want to stop will, the recording yep. for your live demonstration. Yep. I can actually pause the recording and then resume yep. if there's more questions after. Cool. So, so I was just going to get a. Yeah, I will just switch over to the live system now and then um, I think that would be nice for some people to, um, okay. to see. Okay, I'll, I'll stop recording now then. My voice. Uh, okay, Tora is asking about mandatory versus. Um, I have had, we've had lots of discussions. Um, I have taken a poll, an informal poll at an industry meeting in, in Birmingham where the entire room was voting for yes, it should be mandatory. Uh, there is, however, no decision um, been made on this. We're talking to all the regulators and UK. Talking to the high royalties, um, decision has not been made, but there is a strong desire um, that I'm picking up from from the um, 
from the community. But that is really what's going to be brought out in the asset owner consultation on the question. Asset owners have been very, very positive. It will cost them money. Well, the benefits of accurate um, and locational data, the benefits of, of good quality locational data is something that hopefully the Geospatial Commission is trying to promote. And, and this question about will they, asset owners, care and improve their data as it will cost them more money, we think, um, if our assumptions are right, that the, um, there will be savings in costs and, 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 and improvement in health and safety. Therefore, good data management and quality should be promoted. Ah, this is a very small little box. Why in the current BIM environment approach mandated by government, mandated only for large public sector procurement project? That's fine. Um, we're going straight 3D model. Well, we, we've, we've decided that we would love to have the third dimension attributed to all assets, but the experience is in, in our inventories that very few organizations apart from uh, potentially the water companies do have explicit information about the third dimension on any of their assets so we want didn't want to to we didn't want to um set the bar too high amount of tree we have had yeah what frequency of updates? Great question. We are well. Some of the some of our stakeholders are on the on the line, and um, we are talking about two to three months. Right? We are also talking um, to some of them about standing up APIs where the update frequency could be minutes or hours. So we already see that um, in one of our partner bodies. Um, um, sorry, in one of our in one of the um, partners we're working with, which is GeoPlace, which supply the country's address base. We already know that local authorities, for example, have API feeds um, for um, the um, addresses um, and street names. So possibly live, potentially two, up to two months. What advisory messaging vision system? Yep, great question. I would love to have those in a text later. I will go back to people. How can the search area be widened? Um, large, long pipeline projects, very interesting. The scope creep there is too soon. We're going to go into planning. And for the moment, in order to onboard the people who had concerns about the, the size of the network that's being exposed and CPNI, we have kept it to a small area, but we are very aware that sometimes let's take HS2, you know, is, a, a one, is, is that one single safe digging um, project? Um, so that's a great question. Um, line search before you dig and dig that. So we obviously have been in very close consultation with, our, uh, with the commercial um, sector and they will be able to participate, we hope, uh, in a very large um, way in our request for information. So absolutely. They're already talking to us, and we're hoping to hear lots more from them. Capturing, absolutely. We're hoping the loads will be, more, will be captured and fed back. Real-time API feed. Oh, thanks, Clive, for joining the chat. That's great. Private facilities. Very, very interesting final point there from from Luke, um, we are currently, um, some of the, the sort of, the, the, you probably saw in the live demo, sort of electricity substations and water treatment works. So private land is sort of currently excluded. So for example, we're talking to Heathrow, who have their own underground asset register. So at the moment, it is really for works on public land or, um, and, and, and not the treatment works itself. Very good. Um, yeah, I'm just going to jump in there, Hog, because I'm conscious exhausted, of Exhausted, yeah. <laughs> and um, thank you very much, um, obviously, for presenting today. And I, I'm 
great sort of conversations going on there and, and these sort of questions coming through. So really appreciate your time with, with going through those. And as promised, we'll make sure that we get those into a chat. Um, and as Holger sort of said, he'll, he'll make sure he goes back to any of those people that have asked questions um, that we haven't been able to um, answer on this session. So um, thank you very much for everybody dialing in. I hope people have found that useful. Um, just a bit of housekeeping, we've got the Midlands um, Pipeline Industry Guild quiz on Friday. So um, a bit of lighthearted uh, fun for Friday. If you uh, fancy that, please check out our events page. And again, just like to thank Holger again for his time. Um, really, really useful session and um, good to sort of promote this, uh, this long awaited project. So um, thank you very much. And um, yeah. thank you very much. Thanks for your thank time. You.